Well, China has very old uh, civilization and uh, Europe has a number of old civilizations. And both of them uh, are aware that the future of our species depend on living in harmony with the environment. Uh, Europe has had a tradition over the last 20 years of protection of the environment. And China uh, has arrived at this position through its planning process uh, and, and through its civilization, as a matter of fact. So Europe and China uh, together will lead the world uh, in terms of cleaning up the environment and uh, you know, removing the threat of, of CO2, which is incredibly um, dangerous uh, for our species at the moment. So I'm looking forward to both blocks working together uh, to deal with this issue. I think China will be able to deal with the third world much more effectively than, than the former colonizers. Uh, and I think Europe uh, will be a beacon and will get copied by a lot of developed countries, such as America, because there will be a lot of new technologies flowing from this um, green revolution. And, uh, <clears throat> and Europe is going to be, is to the forefront of these at the moment, being caught up by China. But together, we can affect um, a transformation in the way we make electricity, the way we use energy, and the amount of energy that we use. Well, it, it, it's a rather philosophical construct, um, the way it's interpreted uh, in China. Um, China had this uh, series of invasions that happened um, over the last 200 years, and where people like you know, the British, the Americans, the French, particularly the Japanese, just invaded and, and slaughtered at will. And their whole civilization was, was brought to the brink of destruction. And they regard uh, this time as the, as the century of, of humiliation. And then along came Sun Yat-sen, Dr. Sun Yat-sen and, and Mao Zedong. And, uh, you know, they, they achieved, you know, the People's Republic of China in 1949. And they began to realize, uh, every leader in China realizes that, you know, to be, to be rich uh, is, is good. To be rich is powerful. To be powerful is, is free to determine your own future as a, as a, as a civilization, as a, as a subspecies on the planet. So uh, this is seen, it's, it's seen as very important to their national ability to, uh, to determine their own future uh, and help determine the future of the world. They see uh, you know, being rich, uh, being powerful uh, as a necessary component of that. And if they look around, and if you look around history, it's the, it's the rich and the powerful that have dominated um, trade and, and uh, you know, political events, uh, military events as well, although China has absolutely no interest in, in military, military conquest. Uh, it prefers to live in harmony with everybody else according to the precepts of, of Confucius. I think it's great uh, what has been proposed in China. Um, first of all, it's directional. They're going in this direction. And China has consistently confounded the West with its ability to deliver uh, on its promise. Um, and it's made many promises to itself. Uh, the wealth of China has increased by a factor of 15 since Deng Xiaoping uh, uh, set China on this, on this current course. So despite a, a hesitant start in Shenzhen, when there was only 183 trades in the first 100 days since they set up the, the carbon trading scheme there, and notwithstanding the fact that Chongqing has pulled out of the, uh, of the initial seven uh, zones that were targeted. Uh, my feeling is that China will achieve what it sets out to achieve, uh, provided that it learns from the lessons of its own recent past. Uh, it's, there's, there's a voluntary element, uh, in other words, a free market element, uh, but there's also a compulsive element to it. You should do this. This is our target. This is what we will achieve. We're going to learn from what goes on in the provinces and in the cities. That's the way, uh, that's the Chinese planning methodology. It is uh, the most uh, democratic, uh, it is the most profound planning methodology that I've ever uh, read about or, or heard of. Uh, and it goes on to today, um, even the way they transition from one leadership group to another leadership group, uh, keeps a consistency of planning going. So if China says it's going to achieve 45% reduction, I for one uh, would believe that until evidence to the contrary uh, emerges. Thank you.